Now, continuing on from where we left off in the last lesson, we are going to be transforming this single curve into a machined feature. And believe it or not, this is relatively simple to do in Feature Turn. And uh, the first thing that I want to do is I want to switch the view to isometric. And we'll do that by going to the View menu, Principal Views, and clicking on the Isometric button. And you'll see that our view rotates to an isometric view of the part. It still doesn't look anything like a cylindrical machine part, but we'll get there when we do the simulation mode. So now we can take the steps that are needed to transform this geometry or this curve into a feature, which will be our groove. So from the steps menu, we will go ahead and select icon number seven, features. And we're prompted with feature turns conversational window that asks us what kind of feature will we like to make. And we're going to be using a turning type feature. So we'll select next. And this is going to be from a curve and it's going to be a groove type feature. And you can see the the illustration kind of matches what our feature is going to, or I should say what our geometry uh, will turn out to be. So let's click next once we've selected groove. And we're going to create the feature from curve one. There's a drop down. If I had more than one curve on the part, I would be able to select which curve I wanted to select or which curve I wanted to create the geometry from. But in this case, it is curve one. And by default, I can leave everything as is and click on next. And you'll see that I've, I'm starting to see some geometry uh, three dimensionally be uh, represented or features be represented three dimensionally on the part. And we'll offset from curve Z location zero. We'll leave that to the set to the default. It's going to be uh, the type, enter the dimensions of the groove feature. We're going to leave it as is, selected from the curve. It's an OD or outside diameter. Orientation of the curve will be the X axis. We'll select next again. For our curve, we're going to use both a roughing and a finishing pass. And we want to use a finishing tool uh, to cut the groove on that finishing pass. So we'll select uh, Use Finish Tool, and then we'll select Next. So now you'll see we have the operations listed that are associated with our groove. We have a roughing pass and a finishing pass. So let's select Next. And now you'll see the tools that we're going to use. And we're going to use the default tool. If there's a problem with this tool, we'll find that out when we get to the simulation mode. But for now, let's go ahead and use the default tool. And we'll click Next again, keeping all the defaults for this particular tool set. And here's our finishing tool. Again, we'll keep all of the defaults set as is. And we are finished. So now what we'll do is we will actually perform the machining operation in the virtual engineering environment uh, using the simulation toolbar. So we'll select 3D simulation. We'll make sure that our speed, simulation speed is minimized. And then we'll run the simulation. And now you'll see the 3D solid with both the roughing and the finishing passes being represented. And when we're done, we can use the trackball view mode to display the part. Now, if there are any errors with the machining operation, I'll need to see um, or review the operations list. And you'll see that my roughing pass and my finishing pass both are clear. In other words, there are no warnings that are associated with either of these passes, which means that my tool and my tool holder had sufficient clearance to be able to machine the entire feature without any undercutting or uh, in turn causing any machine crashes. So in summary, this is just one example of how we've transformed a chained curve into a machined feature, in this case a groove, using Feature Turn. Mm -hmm.